Hi, I'm Pamela Wisenser, and we are here at the Brandy Library down in Tribeca. We're going to ask some questions to some of the top educators in New York City. I have Dan Nicolescu over here, who is the beverage director for Brandy Library. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, too, And over here, we have Miss Frankie Marshall, a modern bartender. And uh, these two are at the top of their games. Frankie, it's so nice to see you here as well. Oh, thanks, Pam. It's great to be here. So, having both of you here to talk about ways that we like to enjoy cognac, picking your brains a little bit is going to be really incredible and really interesting. So how do we like our cognac? Neat or in a cocktail? Dan? My preference is for neat. Okay. Uh, due to the fact that I really enjoy older spirits, I really like to actually uh, be able to experience and try to understand what made them what they are and this journey through time, how they were changed. And I'm not afraid to say that when we add other modifiers to this, a lot of these complexities are actually going to disappear. They're just going to be overshadowed. And the wild cocktails are very, very fine. I, my preference is for neat spirits. Beautiful. And for you, Frankie? I have to agree with Dan on the neat spirit mm -hmm. um, or the neat way of drinking my cognac. However, I will say that there are a lot of different styles and expressions of cognac that absolutely stand up in a cocktail, stand up to other modifiers. It's just really about choosing the proper modifiers, the proper proportions, and, and the, the proper cocktail to actually make the cognac stand out. So. I've been fortunate enough over the years to try a lot of the cocktails you've made with cognac and I, I can see that because you've really found ways to show people how it can have a lot of beauty mixed with other ingredients, you know, which is really cool, something that you know a lot about, obviously, because this is a category you are an expert in. Well, I appreciate, thank you, Pam, I appreciate that. And you know, we try, yeah. I try because yeah, I really would like to see more, more people drinking cognac and more people, more bartenders working with it and using it as a base so it won't get lost. So you have a pour of your favorite cognac, and it's time to pair something with it. Do you go sweet or savory? Dan? Whoa, this is a, this is a very, very, very tough one. Mm. Because I think you can find um, very appealing pairings on the sweet side and on the savory side. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very, very much depending on the occasion itself and just as a general rule for me. Sure, but if you had to choose? If I have to choose, I really like chocolate. Oh, there we go, sweet. So I would go perhaps with a chocolate that is really, really high uh, in uh, cocoa content. Mm -hmm. Not as much sugar, perhaps, but chocolate would be my, my pairing. Perfect. Love it. And over here, right? Oh, that's, that's it. That, I agree with Dan. This is a very tough one. So I'm going to break it up this way. I will take some frozen BS with oysters, please. Mm. And then I'm going to have my XO with either like a, a mango dessert or a tarte tatin, which is a very typical French apple galette. So we're both going a little sweet, but I love you gave really great suggestions for anybody who might want to pair up their cognac down the line. Of course, during the past few months, we've had to make a lot of accommodations to the way we've been drinking. Um, you can see we have masks on, we're taking a lot of safety precautions, but with that has come also really fun drinking experiences. So I ask you now, do you prefer your cocktails inside or outside the bar? Frankie? Oh, inside or outside the bar? Uh, honestly, lately, I'll take them al fresco. Uh, yeah, it's been really... Yes, I've had a chance to kind of reconnect with nature, reconnect with, you know, the streets of the city, if you will. And um, as I've said before, you know, I can drink my cognac out of a bottle while walking across the Brooklyn Bridge. I don't recommend that you do. However, so yes, I'll take it outside, absolutely. Nice. And Dan, how about you? I like to drink my neat pores on the outside. <laughs> uh, having been a big fan of the European cafe culture, I really like actually to mingle with people, to be able to talk to people. The Charon or the Hudson River? <laughs> I, have to, I have to say that again. <laughs> the Charon. Obviously, madame. The Charan. <laughs> We've got our French lovers over here. Cognac or Jarnac? Dan. Cognac. Cognac. Frankie. Jarnac. Jarnac. Ooh, two different opinions here. Dan, why Cognac? I like the town itself a little better, personally. Maybe it's also a little larger. 
Uh, the architecture, I find it a little more appealing. Nothing wrong with Ranak. I really like it as well, but mm -hmm. for my personal taste, I like cognac a little better. Yeah. I do love the town. The architecture is phenomenal oh. in cognac. Absolutely. And Frankie, Jarnak. Yeah, I, I'm rooting for the smaller town. A lot of great producers are based there. And, you know, while Dan can have his cognac in cognac, I'm going to take my cognac in Jarnak. And I'll be strolling along the Chirac the whole time. The whole way. The whole way. Knacks in both places, it's right? You know yes. Yes, we love it. You heard it here. Both Cognac and Jarnac, both worth visiting. We learned a lot today. We got a lot of great opinions and a lot of great insider information. So to Dan and to Miss Frankie, thank you for your time. However you're drinking your Cognac, please drink it safely. Drink it how you like to have it, hopefully with people that you love. So, santé. Santé. Yeah.